Back in Trinidad after graduating in Canada, Maurice joined the staff of the School for the Blind. Never one to sit on his laurels, he successfully sat the examination for an overseas diploma from the College of Teachers for the Blind in England. In the verdant valley Santa Cruz, where lies the School for the Blind, the presence of Maurice Connor brings sunshine into the lives of many children. Although he's in charge of general administration, Maurice does counseling. He also finds time to teach music. Music is said to be your life. When did you first discover this passion? How did you pursue it? Well, it came naturally to me, I think, when I was about five or six in Barbados at home, I'd sit, and we had a fairly big pantry window, and I'd sit and listen to this chap playing a tin whistle, as he used to call it in those times, and I would sit fascinated by his blowing this thing and really enjoy it. And one day my mother brought home one and I started playing with it. I think that, that, that was the sort of nursery the thing. And when I came to Trinidad in 36, 37, I got to the piano and uh, went from there, you know. Maurice Connor takes his job seriously and he has definite ideas about what he'd like for the school in the future. At the moment, <laughs> more stuff. <laughs> But apart, I mean, in addition to that, we, we are at a kind of a kind of crossroads, I feel, in the education of the blind and visually impaired. Uh, there is this mainstreaming, which is the integration of students into the regular school system. Uh, that is the trend now, and we have to cater for those children. I would like to see the support services improved and at our present stage, we do need additional staff to make it work properly. In addition to that, too, we have the, for want of a better word, internal setup with those children who, for one reason or another, cannot be, main cannot be mainstreamed. We have to provide for them as well. So I I'd really like to see the support services improved and of an expansion of vocational training for those who cannot pursue the regular secondary school career. Such is the influence of this man that over the years it has touched upon the lives of many hundreds of students who have passed through the portals of this school at Santa Cruz. Although he's undoubtedly an outstanding contributor, it is ironic that he has never seen the world in which he has made such a great human and personal contribution. Does it matter? Has it ever bothered him that he cannot see the moon or the stars or the flowers? Well, I've never really given it any thought, actually, because having been blind from birth, I have no kind of visual perception, you see. So uh, all, all my images will have to come from the other four senses. But, um, you know, I've never really <coughs> given it any... I, I can't give it any visual thought. You see, there's absolutely no light perception. But I still have my own mental image of, of uh, the break of day, the early morning breeze, you know, the, the coolness and the freshness in the air, and the birds singing. I still have my own mental image of that. Although he's first and foremost a specialist teacher, it is for his music that Maurice Connor is better known. He has been tutor and an inspiration to many. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love, Indeed, many personalities in the world of music and entertainment consider themselves fortunate to be associated with the maestro and to have participated in his musical life. In fact, both Juliet Eckel and Bernadette Scott would only sing in public if accompanied by Maurice Connor. Maurice is, you know, it's hard to say that someone is perfection, but he is pretty close to perfection as far as accompaniment is concerned and music. 
and you have the confidence that he will be supporting you. A lot of musicians and accompanists, sometimes they, you know, they put themselves in the forefront and you have to sing to work with them. If you happen to, to go flat or to start in the wrong key or anything, Morris is there with you all the time, supporting you. You know, you know that if you take a breath in the wrong place because you're either uptight or something, he's going to wait. He is just not doing his own thing. He's listening. And you feel much more confident to perform with Morris. I hear the music play. It carries me away. All sorrow will have flown when you're mine and mine alone. But that music seems to say I'm still not saying in my heart. It's wanting you to know. I love you so. That long relationship we have had, I think Morris and I have really grown accustomed to each other. He's a tremendous accompanist, and as you probably know, not everyone is an accompanist. An accompanist really has to breathe with the singer and listen to the singer, and the singer has to come first, and Morris is prepared to take second place. And I think this way, with his keen ear, he listens and he breathes with you. And as a result, I have really, I don't only sing with him, but any time that he can play for me, I always choose him. It's not only for Bernadette and Juliet, but also for Hazel Ward. He has been her musical mainstay over the years for her television series. Of my friend, advisor, and accompanist, Mr. Morris Connor. Enjoy now memorable musical moments from Fiddler on the Roof with the love movement under the direction of Bernadette Scott. Maurice's achievements in music are impressive. He has on two occasions won the Woodbins Championship at the music festival. In the leader class, he also won a plaque with Bernadette Scott. He has written his own compositions, such as the one being used as the theme for this program. And in 1979, to climax his achievements, he was awarded the Medal of Merit for his outstanding contribution to music. The soul of Maurice Connor is filled with music, religion, knowledge and the great understanding of the human condition. Despite his lack of vision, there is no lack of confidence, no feeling of insecurity, no self-pity. On the contrary, he exudes happiness and purpose, sometimes daring, qualities often lacking in many of us who are blessed with the gift of sight. Memorable I'd like moments. to tell you something about him. All right. He went down the islands just to show you the kind of person he is. We took him down the islands one Saturday, quite a long time ago, say eight years ago. And Morris, we were all water skiing. And Morris said, Jules, you know, I would like to try and water ski. What? And we said, sure, fine. So in the water he got, I think it was my, either my husband or my brother, one of them, got in with him and helped him put the water skis on. Do you know that Morris Connor got up on a pair of water skis and skied You're in Mona's Bay down the islands. <laughs> so that's something, you know, that I would like to share with you. He'd probably <laughs> kill me here. Adjectives to describe Maurice Connor are many. Adventurous, curious, talented, intelligent, witty, humorous, the list could go on. But there's one we must add to that list, and it is diplomatic. When the suggestion came up that he should now get married, this is how he sparred the question. Well, <laughs> a few people have made that suggestion, too, yeah. <laughs> and I always tell them, well, you never know what's around the corner. Maurice Garner speaks with such an air of confidence and self-assuredness, it is easy to discover that, unlike many people, he has come to terms with himself a long time ago. His many successes have not diminished his reverence for God, 
Rather, he amplifies his love on wings of song whenever he sits at the organ of many a church. At 59, he's indeed an extraordinary person. He may be blind, but the vision and the wisdom he possesses suggests that with his inner sight, the colors are perhaps brighter, the sounds truer, the tastes sharper, and the perceptions clearer. In all of this, Maurice Connor may yet have a lesson for us all, but more so for those who are blind. Make use of, of whatever talents you have or whatever skills, right? That you, 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 you have or can get. <coughs> you build up whatever you have to the maximum and I, I, that will, to a large degree, offset. I know that's, that's, that's a general thing because each person is an individual and you have to take each case on its merits, in fact. <coughs> you know, you, we have the adventitiously blind, those who become blind at some point in time, very difficult for them to overcome the psychological adjustment. And you have those who have been blind from birth, um, but whatever, whatever talents you have, be, be you adventitiously blind or blind from birth, develop them to the maximum and um, keep in touch with prayer. <laughs>